The sun was a motherfucker of genius on our faces. Check out that sun. When Freddie and I drove out of Geneva listening to the doobies in early spring, warm enough to carry our bodies into heaven, though neither of us were dead or believed in heaven, we knew something was up. It might have been the wind. It might have been the harmonies of long train running. It might have been the way the old Ford took its turns into green and more green, and the green of people dying and living and weeping and sitting on lawns, cans of beer in hand, after a long upstate New York winter. Freddie and I weren't lovers and didn't want to be, but we were in love, and the state of open space filled up the gas tank with the pure and ever-present possibility that youth was coming to an end. And that must have been it, even though we knew nothing the way you know everything when you are 21 and dancing on the lip of a world that could collapse at any moment. Michael McDonald's falsetto made sure that all that horror was held at bay, and we might have had sandwiches in the back and jugs of water spiked with flowers and the dream of a Buddha that both of us knew didn't exist, but the spirit sure did and we had it. We had the best of the doobies and a cassette player, and the sun was a motherfucker of genius on our faces so that when we got to wherever we were going, thought we had arrived, there was nothing else to do but take off our clothes and collapse in a field somewhere near Seneca Lake. We didn't care if the cows came to eat us alive or the farmer with his rifle to shoot us dead or the crows who thought we might have been corpses. We didn't care. We had left the car running and Tom Johnston's baritone sailed into the halls and vaulted ceilings of our bodies as if we were some kind of small white church perched on the side of the road with the doors and windows flung wide open. 